Hello, everybody. Yeah, it's another Bandai game. Bandai. This time we're delving into the Dot Hack franchise. The update is available, yes. But, while the update is available, I haven't finished it yet. Launch the terminal disk. Okay. Volume 1 and Volume 4 are available on the disk. I've got 33 minutes left. So this will be like video zero. Can't remember the same direction as the input. Okay. Close memory in the world's main menu. On. Vibration. Yes. On. Let's adjust the display for this game, yeah? That's so cool. Sound. Movies will be at max, voice volume. Okay. Movie involves voice volume will be at max, background music will be down, sound effects volume will be a little bit lower as well. Language. English. So about 30 minutes, unless my Wi-Fi data gets cut off. Probably will. Alright. We'll delve into the backstory a little bit later, but let's go ahead and get the first hour's worth of gameplay going, yeah? I'd really, I really would love to cheat, but... Let's... I've actually never played a dot .hack video game before. I've watched the anime, i watched Let's Plays of the original series. Let's play these four games normally. Unless there's a point that make, where it makes sense to cheat, yeah? Ooh. This is effing beautiful! Holy shit, Bondi. I mean, you didn't hold out anything with this franchise. I mean, even with Digimon, you didn't hold out anything, but damn. This isn't even a flagship franchise of yours. And yet, holy mother of God. This remaster is fucking beautiful. Haseo. Okay. So we just watched the character creation process. Dot hack slash GU. Okay. Eternal City Makanu.
Wow, the world really has changed since Whoa, the Whoa, this anime. is cool. Whew, it's pretty. Hey. Hey, you. You, the adept rogue. Yeah, you. I'm talking to you. So, I take it this is your first time playing this game. Yeah. I just finished installing it to my PC. I haven't. Well, if you well, wish, installing this part. we will be honored to show you around. Huh? I am sure you would like to become well acquainted as soon as possible. Just say yes and come along with us. I promise you won't regret it. I mean, no uh. lip claps, but so still avatar. All right, it is decided then. Here, I'll hand you my member address. Iota. Asta. Member addresses are short email addresses that you can only use in the world. Short mail allows you to instantly send and receive messages from any player online in the world. You can only invite people that you have member addresses for to join into your party. All right, so let's open the menu. Something's hinky, but okay. This is a list of all the people who have a member address. Huh? Add IO10 as a member by pressing X. Okay. Let's have some fun. Invite Austin to the party. Austin I am honored to lend you my sword. Okay, great. Now your party is complete. Remember, you can only invite people logged into the world. Enough with the formalities. Should we go on to your first adventure? Head to the save shop before going on an adventure. Talk to the save shop clerk and she's safe from the menu to save your progress in the game. You know, I love about online games is getting to meet all sorts of people. So we can talk and trade using this. Okay. Hey there, nice to meet you. Are you going on an adventure now? Okay. Whew. Hello there. Are you a noob? These days, there have been PKers who go only go after noobs who be on guard. There are already PKs in this updated version of the world. Sheesh. Welcome. Would you like to save your adventure? You can save your game data here. Come here when you reach important points in your adventure. After the preparations are complete, use the Chaos Gate to go on an adventure. This is a transporter called the Chaos Gate. Players can use this to travel from the root town to other locations. Oh, little puppy's interested in all of pretty lights. Choose Warp Menu. Ooh. In the world, all locations except for root towns, fields, and dungeons are called areas. You can warp to these areas by combining three words at the Chaos Gate. These words determine the type of area, monster strength, and so on. All right, let's try out the word selection. Choose area word from the menu. This is where you input the words. The thing at the top is the word plate. You combine the three words in here to create the area you want to go. The gyro at the left of the screen shows your current stock of words. You can get more words by getting information from other players, emails, and forums. Okay, why don't you give it a try? Let's start with the first word. Choose courageous from your stock.
create this engaging okay. game. Okay, now you can go to your first area. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. See the mark left of the area word? That's a server symbol. It indicates the server you're currently in. Right now, it's showing triangle for Delta. So, as you can see, we are all in the Delta server. If it's a different server, you'll go to another area even with the same area word. Pay attention to the server symbol when invited to an area by a friend. If you want to know more, just check out some of the forums. All right, then we're off to Delta Courageous Engaging Daydream. So, we've all been transported to a field. Open your map to take a look at the layout. Okay. Clicking the touchpad. This is the area map. Use this screen to check current position, mission info, and any other information you may need. Okay, there's an altar, and a beast statue, and then another altar, then another altar. Okay. This is our mission. Missions are basically, um, well, I guess they're sort of like our objective for the area. It looks like this is a collection mission. We must collect three symbol fragments and make our way to the beast temple. The symbol fragments are in treasure chests found on the altars. The altars are protected by monsters, so the only options are to open the treasure without being seen, or defeat the monsters first, then open the treasure. These are the altar icons. I suggest we first head to each of these icons and open the treasure chests. Now, this is the icon for the Beast Temple, which is our final destination. Okay, now that we've confirmed what our mission is, let's be on our way. Wait up, Asta. You forgot one more thing. Using this returns to town. It's got a healing function called Platform Rest. Okay, this time let's really get going. Mm. If you're not sure where the Beast Temple or the Altars are, just click the map. Okay, it's a very simple map, so... That's nice. We found an altar already. Perform a surprise attack by approaching the monsters around the altar without being seen and pressing X when the target cursor appears. Good, now press X for a surprise attack. Your life belongs to me! Once a battle begins, the battle area spreads out like this. The battle area is surrounded by the battle fence, so it's virtually impossible for anyone to escape. The only way to escape from a battle is with an item called a smoke screen. Asta and I don't have one right now, so we'll have to fight it out. Hey, you're not too bad. Not so difficult, huh? Hold down X and release when the gauge is full. Charge attacks are effective even against enemies that are guarding. Nice! Yeah, keep it up. That's it. Just continue fighting like that. Regular attack. Combo. Repeatedly. Charge attack, hold down. Gu circle for guard. Three gold pieces, no items. Okay. Symbol fragment. Head for the next altar, the one to the east.
All right, we found another altar. I'll teach you about using skills to attack. Regular and combo attacks are just simply normal attacks. Skills enable you to do much more damage to your enemies. Okay, what you see here is the skill trigger menu. Do you see the four panels? You can press the button that corresponds to each panel to execute the different arts. Now try it out by using the arts. Gale Blade. Blade. All right, perfect. The skill trigger is not just a shortcut. It can also be used to stop enemy attacks, or it can be used to interrupt one of your own. Aren't you forgetting something important, EO-10? There is an even more important use for the skill trigger. Of course I haven't forgotten. You're talking about Rengeki, right? Dance skill attack with an increased amount of damage. To perform it, use a skill attack when an enemy is surrounded by blue and purple rings. Here's one. Continuously inflict the damage. Attack the enemy until it's surrounded by blue and purple rings. Shadow Flash! Radio Blade! Favorite action is triggered when Rengeki is used or other conditions are met, raises the morale of party members, allows you to execute more powerful attacks. Conditions for favorite action may vary with each party member. There you go. Very well. Shall we let him play as he wishes? That's a good idea. All right, Haseo. It's all up to you now. They're ours. Tiger that was nothing. Awesome job! All right, let's finish off by heading for the Beast Temple. Okay, now use the map to check your position, just like we taught you. Huh. 
This is the statue of Fulset, the god of law. We just call it the Beast Statue. But I think in the game's story, it's supposed to be an important god or something. You see that treasure box? That's the offering to the Beast Statue. There's a rare item inside of that that you can only get in this area. Go ahead and open it, Haseo. I'm willing to bet sure. they're gonna steal it. Go ahead. You're still a noob. You need all the help you can get. Thanks. <gasps> what the? The items in the treasure chest are your rewards. Yes, and our reward is you. <laughs> Called it. I love taking out these pathetic noobs. It's really quite fun. Face it, an idiot like you isn't qualified to play this game. Hey, hold on. I thought you said I could kill this one. Don't you remember? After all... This is my reward! How pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you expect from a noob who's just logged in for the first time? Oh, come on, say something already. Hello. <laughs> I swear, just pretend to be their friend, and they fall all over themselves to let you PK them. <laughs> Hey, you're still around, aren't you, kid? Huh? What the? Welcome to the world. Eight months later. What an idiot. 
First eight months, he became so good at the game he was able to take out the people who were playing, like killing other players. Okay, that makes sense. Every MMO has to have one PKK. At least MMOs that allow one time PVP have to have at least one. on the cover art. So is he the main character or is he like a side character? That's the real question. I'm surprised. I didn't think you'd be that strong. I guess this means that the rumor about you killing 100 PKers wasn't a lie after all. Hey, come on, don't look at me like that. Here, let me apologize. So just take it easy, calm down, and die! <laughs> hmm. Do you know Triedge? What did you say? He's a legendary PK shrouded in blue fire. They say players that get killed by him never come back to the game. Huh? Oh, come on now. Don't tell me you actually believe that crap. Those old forum fairy tales. So, you think you can go up against me, the great Bordeaux, and just walk away like nothing happened? So he's looking for information about something called yeah, Triage. I think I can. Or someone called Triage. <laughs> so I'm guessing the reason it's called Rebirth is because he's going to get reset back to zero somehow. Because that's what a Rebirth is. Like I initially thought it was going to be the. The fact it was a reboot of the franchise, but no, no. He obviously became super strong in eight months. <sighs> so it's you. You, the character that stinks of death. The terror of death. You're the PKK, Haseo. <coughs> players who kill other players are disgraceful. And I agree it's terrible how PKs can just strut around the world so easily these days. But is it right that you PKKs have chosen to use brute so force to more. stop them? I don't have time for this. Not now. You have no authority, and it earns you nothing. So why? I am the leader of Moon Tree's Unit 2. My friends call me Sakaki, and I'm afraid I cannot overlook your actions. Did you say Moon Tree? What's that? The name of a guild? 
Sorry, Sakaki, but I've already got enough friends. Thanks. <gasps> Do you always interrupt people like that? You know, Sakaki wasn't finished talking to you yet. <sighs> <sighs> Shino. Huh? Who's the Shino? Atoli. Hmm? Do you know this person? Uh, no. Atoli. It's not unusual to meet players with similar characters in an online game like this. <laughs> just a case of mistaken identity. Hey, you. Why don't you just... Huh? A text message. Delta Hidden Forbidden Waterfall. Waiting at RK Keln. But who sent it? <gasps> Ovan! Okay, if it ever gives me control of the character again, I'm gonna save as quickly as possible. Just hold on a moment. Why don't you stop acting like a complete fool? Remember what you PKKs are trying to do. If you succeed, you'll be no different from the PKs themselves. It's been a long time, Haseo. Or maybe I should call you the Terror of Death. You've gotten quite strong, a lot stronger than you were back then. Well, I was forced to become stronger, thanks to you. You, where have you been? Haseo, always the reliable one. I knew I could count on you. When the Twilight Brigade broke up, why didn't you come then? What have you been doing the last six months? I was busy. It was such a small seed. I needed to find out what was growing inside. And there was only one way to find out. That's why I decided to raise it. You raised it? What are you talking about, Ovan? I'm speaking figuratively. When you suddenly disappeared, we all just... Why did you disappear like that? After that, Shino... Haseo, do you want to know about Triage? Wait, you know Triage? Six months now, and Shino hasn't come back to the world since Triage killed her. Meanwhile, the real-life Shino is lying in a coma. And no one seems to know the reason why. Triage. He is not a normal PK. So you knew about Shino? Yes, but that's all that I know. But if you were able to find Triage, you might learn something about Shino's coma. You may also learn more about what really happened that day. And if you were somehow able to defeat Triage, then maybe Shino would come out of the coma. If my information is correct, he will be back today, at the scene of the crime. The scene of the crime? You mean... Delta Hidden Forbidden Holy Ground. The place where Shino was killed. The Holy Ground's Cathedral. Finally, I'll get my chance. I swear I'll bring Shino back. I'll do it. Ovan. Yes, 
You and I, we're the only ones who could possibly bring her back. We're the only ones. Something's not right. Ovan? I'll meet you at the holy ground. There are some things I must do. That does not seem right. Like at all. He will be back today at the scene of the crime. Triage is coming here. You just What's suddenly realized there was something off. <laughs> no, he's Tri Edge. Shit. Tri Edge. He's Triage. Oh shit! You bastard! He's the protagonist of the original quartet and of one of the anime and all the OVAs from that time period. So it's like shit, 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 fuck. So he turned evil? That's uh, not good. There's a aura left. Fuck. So the protagonist of the original four is a bad guy now? What happened to the Delta server in all that time? Shit. Oh! <laughs> 
<laughs> of course there was something hinky. Ovon led him into a trap. Fuck. Huh? What the? I was fighting Triage, but then... Damn it, I can't remember. Huh? I don't remember doing that. Reformatted? What's going on? What about my emails? Huh? What the hell? I would never delete these. They're all... gone? Even the emails I got from Shino. Everything's been reformatted. What the hell is going on? An email? Fine, let's take a look. Ovan? There are two paths before you. One of these will lead to safety and shame. It's the path where you give up the world and never log in again. The other path leads to peril and pride. It's the path where you continue the world and resume your search for truth. Let me be blunt, the latter path is torturous and will threaten both your mind and body. Once you've chosen it, there will be no going back. If you still choose to walk this path, then there will come a time when you and I will meet again in the world. When that time comes, I will once again say this to you. Welcome to the world. Trial and truth. Whether or not I should quit the world? You should know better, Ovan. I'm gonna go back to the world. I'm gonna get Shino back, no matter what! Thanks to the support of its many fans, the world will celebrate its 10th anniversary. CyberConnect Japan today announced that the online RPG, The World R2, reached 12 million copies in sales worldwide today. New space station nearing completion. The International Space Station hadn't been launched. Shit. Okay. With the participation of Japan and many other countries, the International Space Station, slated for completion in 2017, is nearly done. As large as a soccer stadium, this fully manned facility will be used for various types of research in a deep space environment. Administration Relations Bill. As with the majority vote. With this, the digitization of the government approaches its final stages. Starting this month, all local servers managed by regional governments will be frozen. Various ID rules used by self government bodies will be unified to federal government specifications. In addition, will become required for all government bodies to adopt the numbering system and for all citizens to wear their own number at all times for administrative purposes. This will introduce a speed government process by conducting them online. It is already being used in online banking shopping sites. By using a receiver placed in one's home, will be able to use their cell phones or mobile computers to access variety of services from anywhere in the country. Yet, in spite of the incredible conveniences, the system has met with severe opposition. Recently, the Independent Japan Party won many seats in the lower house of the Diet because of their popular position to abandon the bill altogether. Calls for all political parties to discuss this bill are still continuing, and the problem has attracted a lot of media attention. Mr. Ko G. Chief editor of the weekly magazine Netwatcher had this to say. It's true that the system will make things very convenient. When you compare the time the bill was first approved to now, encryption technology has made huge leaps. The, Nash the Network Administration Bureau has been established, and some semblance of order has been brought to the internet. There are far fewer data leaks, and at first glance it would appear there are no problems whatsoever. However, take a moment to rethink. In exchange for the IT advancements and a more convenient lifestyle, we have been reduced to being defined by a 15-digit combination. This is no different from the ear tags placed on cows and horses to tell them apart. It's no wonder the people are so opposed to this degrading system. Despite all this, 
This doesn't mess made it through the legal process and will soon be a part of our lives. Will there ever come a day where we'll welcome it? The Online Administration Act received a majority vote of the ruling party, meaning the adoption of the citizen numbering system seems to be inevitable. As a result, the process of converting to an electronic government has overcome its final hurdle. Interesting. So the news report is actually detailing it and showing both sides, but the little snippet isn't. Sounds a little bit like the U.S. these days. I'm a hero. Those are the words written on a sketchbook found in a young boy's school bag. The recent outbreak of juvenile delinquency is said to be the effect of video games. Games have far better graphics compared to novels and comics, and games are interactive. It's easy for children to see themselves as the protagonist of their favorite games. This is a dangerous phenomenon. For example, what if a child were to play an extreme action game and begin to believe that he was the game's main character? He could possibly act in real life the same way he could in the game. It frightens me just thinking about the consequences of that. There are several cases of parents of both game-influenced assailants and their victims suing game companies, claiming they are responsible for making their children into criminals or somehow responsible for their child's death. Whatever the game companies respond by, we have implemented a perfectly good rating system for our games, and no one is allowed to buy them without proper identification. Perhaps the ones who are truly to blame are the parents, who allow their children to buy such games. A friend of one of the victims had this to say, You can't just blame the problem on one thing, it's more complex than that. Everyone involved has, shared a has to share the blame. The game makers, the parents, even myself are no exception. We should all realize this, and stop this pointless arguing. After all, it's not like arguing will help bring back what was lost. Okay. This argument, by the way, it's been proven that video games actually reduce violence. There are some issues, however. Let me explain. Yeah? Whenever you deep dive into an MMO like the world your mind physically leaves the body it's a form of astral projection just amplified by technology and augmented a little bit so juvenile delinquency no this death by gaming problem however that we're going to get to in a moment yeah definitely a very real possibility when it comes to the world cc japan announces new model mtd mtd M2D, okay. CyberConnect Japan announced a new model of micro monocle display. The M2D has been developed as the next generation of HMDs. Previous models have suffered from various imbalances such as high performance technology, <laughs> heavy awkward helmet, or goggle types that were lacking audiovisual capabilities. However, this new generation features all the comfort of a light goggle display together with AV performance that outperforms previous helmet types. Wow. I keep forgetting how old this game is. It's, it's from back when 1024 was the max. It features a standard 1280 to 1024 full color projection display, complete with transparency option, and high quality audio immersion thanks to its new Omnisphere system. Its default usage is monocle mode, a mode where the screen is displayed in only one lens, but is also capable of switching into double lens mode allowing one to enjoy a fully immersive virtual world. Customer service is also excellent with regular updates and complimentary software. Personally recommend the software. <sighs> Automatic broad interpretation. It allows you to select objects in front of you and provides easy access to information about them. It's always been selected as the standard equipment for the CC Japan's online game The World R2. Plans for it to be used in other companies' projects are said to be in the works. It's a bit pricey, but with a suggested price of $420, but it's worth it. I can't wait for its release. In truth, it would be a lot less... Sorry, a lot more expensive than that, given what it is. It is effectively a wearable smartphone that reacts to eye movement and brainwaves. The price point would actually be more like a hundred thousand dollars per unit. 
Display your world. In the real world. For business or for entertainment. The new M2D Micro Monocle Display it. now on sale. Once you're freed from your mobile, the net opens up in front of your eyes. New York and back in a day. Today marked the official launch of advanced supersonic travel since the use of Concords was abandoned more than 10 years ago. Japan and Europe have cooperated in developing the first usable a assist model. The plane seats 250 people, possesses a cruising range of 10,000 kilometers, and can fly from Tokyo to New York in roughly four hours. A considerable reduction from the current 14 hour trip, although a day trip to New York City is no longer a mere dream. To make this dream come true will require some serious cash. Current price of a ticket is 3,200,000 yen, roughly $30,000. A round trip is double that. It's enough to make the old expensive Concorde prices feel like pocket change in comparison. I mean, hey, truth. However, there appears to be no shortage of people desperately seeking tickets despite the high prices. The moment assist flights were announced, the phones began ringing off the hook for requests for, with requests for tickets, causing the phone lines to become jammed. One employee remarked that he just hopes the company can keep going. The supersonic passenger jet, ASST, which can attain speeds of over Mach 3, has been officially commissioned. As a result, the amount of time it takes to fly from Tokyo to New York has been shortened from 14 hours to just 4 hours. It wasn't long ago that the word introvert referred to someone who would spend most of their day cooped up in their room playing an online game. Guilty. But now, advances in mobile technology have given birth to a new type of introvert known as outdoor introverts who play online games wherever they go. These introverts insist that they are healthier than their indoor counterparts because they spend much more time outside. But they refuse to let go of their mobile devices, whether they're traveling to work or school, shopping, eating out, or even going on a date is unnatural. One of these introverts... JD, a 20-year-old college student, says, Nothing I do in the real world feels real. It's so much more satisfying to complete a quest with your friends together online. For them, online games are more than just entertainment. If anything, their mealtimes and errands only serve as something to do in between game sessions. And now these people are outside, being introverts like it's completely natural. In the old days, when people thought of an online junkie, they envisioned someone locked in their room, glued to their computer 24 hours a day. But today, due to radical improvements in mobile devices, network games can be enjoyed outside and have given rise to a whole new breed of online junkies. Death by Gaming. Incidents of players dying from playing online games for too long are increasing around the world. In most cases, players died from heart failure due to extreme exhaustion after playing a game for over 30 hours straight. One college student was enjoying a game in an internet cafe when he was suddenly collapsed, taken to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. The student was a well-known player in the online game The World, and was reportedly leveling up his character in preparation for the title match in the arena, an online series of gladiator battles. There have also been incidents of players dying from too much excitement after losing an arena match, placing greater focus on the problem of online game addiction. Some people have said, in a flash, the world was gone. It has been two years since the largest online game ever, The World, with 20 million copies sold, was taken offline. It was around this time, CyberConnect Japan had a fire at their headquarters. As the extent of the damage was caused by the fire which wiped out all the world's data became increasingly apparent, CC Corp's leaders had a rather somber press conference. The game program, character data, and cyber data were all reduced to ashes, and what was left was drenched in water used to put out the fire. This happened soon after a string of break-ins, which meant the usage of the mega float had just been stopped. All backup data was in the company headquarters. Online data has been recognized pro as property for many years now, but unlike antiques, jewelry, or other tangible objects, the moment data is damaged or disappears, it loses its worth forever. Even now, the voices of those seeking their lost property can be heard, but CC Corp refuses to budge from their unwavering attitude of it's gone, it coming back. Now two years since that incident, there appears to be no end to the discussions about online data, personal property, and protection, even with the imminent release of R2.
ubiquitous families surpassed 70 percent. Ministry of Health, Labor, and Welfare announced today that, according to the latest Japanese census, the number of ubiquitous families have surpassed 70 percent of the population. Ubiquitous meaning present everywhere. It means the it refers to the third generation of computers. The first generation was the mainframe, one computer f per household. Second was personal computer, one for fa each family member. Current third generation, using a computer in daily life, has become almost as natural as eating. We can connect to the internet without effort or even conscious thought anywhere, anytime. Home electronics are now managed by a personal home server, and we are able to now watch over everything, from the contents of our refrigerator to the temperature of our bathtubs, from programming TV shows onto our HD recorders, and even checking if our doors are properly locked from any terminal anywhere, including cell phones. Furthermore, progress made in voice and handwriting recognition has opened up computers to a more active, flexible method of working, and users are no longer ruled by a strict list of settings managed by a machine. It comes as no surprise that the most active members of the ubiquitous family are in their 20s, but it's surprising is that the next largest group is made up of senior citizens. The industry reports the main reason for this added simplicity. The added simplicity, such connectivity allows the elderly in managing their homes. Okay. That makes sense now. Jesus. CyberConnect Japan announced today that it, re it has sold 12 million copies worldwide. CC Corp's other products include The World, Fate Must Die, Person, and Kurukuru Muchi. The World R2 is an online game set in a fantasy world where humans and beasts live together. Players become world-renowned adventurers traveling around killing monsters and discovering the world's secrets. Wait, I just put two and two together. So the reason the goddess is no longer prominently displayed in that temple is because she, as an AI, wasn't supposed to help a player. Now that player's back and trying to get revenge on new players for the death of... Oh, that makes sense. Either that or his leftover data is running amok. It has to be one or the other. As recently as a few years ago, the world... Shares in the world were at an all-time low during to, due to the emergence of new developers. On top of that, the world was completely shut down after all data was lost in a disastrous fire at CC Corp headquarters. Amid the chaos and compensation issues that resulted from those events, they announced the sequel, The World R2. Most people deemed it a desperate plea for attention, and many analysts declared that it would fail miserably. However, the figures shown today have proven that the world is as popular as ever. CC Corp seems confident. Watch us overcome the problems we encountered... Our previous title. <sighs> okay. Welcome to the Online Jack, the no-holds barred information program that brings you the hottest topics. Our star reporter, Salvador Hira, will bring you all the dirt you want to know, and here's this week's Jack Target. Doll Syndrome. A mysterious illness that is secretly spreading among elementary school students. Oh boy. This is Salvador Ihara's Online Jack. We investigate the hottest controversies in today's news. The in your face, hard hitting show. Welcome to Online Jack. Okay, get ready, all you netizens out there. Today's Jack target is Doll Syndrome. Have you heard of it? It's the mystery illness that's spreading like wildfire among grade schoolers. It causes verbal and mental defects that leave victims non-responsive. That's right, this disease turns children into lifeless dolls, oh no! But we'll fight back. To combat this earth-shattering crisis, we at Online Jack started an investigation. I, Salvador Ihara, will save the world! It's called mm. Doll Syndrome, a truly mysterious illness. Some scientists tell us the cause is endocrine-disrupting chemicals, but what 